Welcome back to my Species Spotlight series. In this sixth episode, we'll be covering the common garter snake. I hope you guys enjoy. So Thymnophis sirtalis is more commonly known as the common garter snake, is a very common snake species throughout the US and is actually more of an umbrella type name as there are many snakes under the common garter snake that look very much different. And if you want to know exactly what you're looking at, then you have to go down to subspecies. The common garter snake is a species, and there are a bunch of different subspecies in that species, such as the eastern and Chicago garter snake, which are here in Wisconsin. And there are also red-sided garters, New Mexico, San Francisco garters, and many others. So I'll really be talking about the eastern and Chicago garters, as they are from here. The other ones I don't really know too much about, but they are still common garters, so let's get right to it. So the common garter snake is the most common snake species in Wisconsin and is a very common snake species throughout the United States and actually lives in every county throughout Wisconsin. These guys grow 17 to 26 inches on average and have been seen to reach roughly 3 feet. Now their coloration can definitely vary a lot. You can have a background color of black, brown, green, and then you will have yellow stripes throughout. However, some of them will have blue, some of them will have green, they can just be in so many different colors and you'll even get some checkered pattern common garters from time to time. The common garter snake can be identified by the lateral stripe on scale row 1, 2, and 3. It can be halfway on 1 and then fully on 2 and 3, but that is definitely the most accurate way an everyday herper can identify a common garter snake. These guys can live in almost every type of habitat and actually prefer forests and open canopy wetlands. Their diet consists of frogs, toads, salamanders, newts, fish, earthworms, and more. The common garter snakes here in Wisconsin actually are active in early spring all the way to late fall and then they will actually go into brumation for the winter. Now as for breeding for these guys, they will actually breed in spring and form mating balls which is where one female will have multiple males trying to breed her at once and then a few months later that female will give live birth to a bunch of little babies. They actually do not lay eggs which is something that I think is really cool. So one way to tell the difference between a male and a female common garter snake is females will actually get a lot bigger than males will and then the tails will actually be wider for a longer period on males and females tails will actually taper down quickly and be much shorter. Something that I found really cool is that the common garter snakes will actually hibernate all together in giant groups. Now this is something that is really interesting and even a little bit controversial. The common garter snake is actually technically venomous and it is only a mild venom and affects small prey just to slow it down so they can overpower it and then eat it. It doesn't really affect us, however, it can cause a little bit of swelling as seen here. I have been bit by one and I had some sort of little bit of a reaction as you can see. And when threatened, the common garter snake will actually release a bad smelling liquid called musk and it will definitely leave your hands in a little bit of a smelly situation. Another awesome thing about the common garter snake is that they are actually resistant to the poisons in the American toad and some species of newt, which is part of their diet. Now the common garter snake has an absolute huge range as a whole. They are actually found in the southernmost tip of Florida to as far north as the northern west territories in Canada. So there are five types of garter snake species in Wisconsin. You have the common garter snake, the plains garter snake, the butler's garter snake, and the eastern and western ribbon snakes, which are all just separate species, so it's really important to know which one you're looking at. And like I previously said, the common garter snake is kind of like an umbrella term. You actually have the eastern garter snake, which is Thamnophis sirtalis sirtalis. Then you have the Chicago garter snake, which is Thamnophis sirtalis semifasciatus. You can identify a Chicago garter snake from an eastern garter snake by the prevalent barred pattern on the Chicago garter snake's neck. The Chicago garter snake also has a very small range compared to the eastern garter snake. The Chicago garter snake is only in a little bit of southeast Wisconsin and of course Chicago around that area as well as a tiny part of Indiana. And for the eastern garter snake, that thing is absolutely everywhere in every county throughout Wisconsin, even where the Chicago garter snakes are, which does create a bit of a problem when it comes to identifying them because, like we said in the painted turtle video, they create integrades when two subspecies breed together, not hybrids, and those are very hard to ID unless you have genetic testing, so I have zero clue on how to tell the difference between an integrade and it could be just one of the two subspecies. And that's it. That's all the info that I found and was able to come out from my knowledge of the common garter snake. 
I hope you guys learned something from this video and be sure to subscribe for more content in the future. Shout out to the Wisconsin DNR's website for some awesome info and leave any questions or concerns about the info I provided in this video in the comments down below. I'll see you guys in the next one. Ow! 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 Oh, he's trying to eat me! Same dang snake.